Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's program, I'm just going to be focusing on a few things, very valuable, I hope, and that is, as per the title of this video, I'm going to be looking at the levels at which the Bitcoin price, which seems to be now going through a correction, what levels can it come back to? Very important to have a look at the levels before we start our new 60-day cycle. And of course, I'll be talking about the 60-day cycle. Today is actually day 60, and what we've had is a pullback right on the day. So I'll have a look at the 60-day cycle and make sense of it for the next few weeks and months. So if that sounds interesting, then without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder. Please remember, everything in my video is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the 60-day cycle. And as I mentioned last week, that we were coming to the point at the end of the 60-day cycle, which started back here on the 12th of October. So this is what we were riding in the Bitcoin Miners Club, the swing trades from all the way up here. But now we were coming to the end of the cycle, as I mentioned in the last video, that we may well get a little pullback right into this zone here. And it actually came back to 40,300. So is this the only correction we're going to get? Well, I'm going to have a look at some of the levels at which this price could actually come back down to and where it would actually make sense. And this is really where the 60-day cycle has a unique take in trying to find a template which the Bitcoin actually works around. So you know that when we're coming to the 60-day cycle, that there will be some sort of a pullback into the 60-day cycle. And so this is exactly what's happened one more time here. And the question is, how long will this pullback last? Will it be just one day? Will it be one week? So where will we actually end the 60-day cycle? That's what we want to really know. So just have a look at the possible pullbacks based on our based on the classical charting, which really looks at support and resistance. So obviously, this is a zone at 40 to 41,000. And if we zoom out, you'll see why this is a zone. We can see that in the last bull market when we came up here, here, we actually got very strong resistance at this point, And the high of that was at 42,000. And then we got resistance here exactly at the same point. And then we got support exactly at this point, etc. all along here. So this is why having gone above that level to 45, we've now come back and retested this level here. So this is really a zone where we could easily bounce back from. And you can see that it's right into this zone at the moment. We've created a M pattern, double top, a very classic double top reversal pattern here. How far that will go, we don't know. But the next level after this, so 40, 41, is the current level that we're finding support. So going forward, it would seem very obvious if you go a little bit further down, you'll see there is a resistance point here. Very clearly, at the tops of these wicks, to the bodies of the candles, so the next level of support is at the tops of this resistance point here. So this is where I would find the next support, anywhere between 38 to 38, 800. If we fail this level here, and the next level of support would be this region here, at around about the 35, thousand dollar mark and that seems an obvious level because there's a lot of resistance all along this level here and then once we got above it we were finding support on these two levels so to the top of that range about 38 and the bottom of that range around 35. So these are the three levels that we can expect where the 60-day cycle will bottom out. I wouldn't rule out this level as being the bottom and bouncing off here because of the level of demand out there and the lack of supply and with the narrative of the ETF in the background. And if you were to use a trend line, all along here and this gives us another indication another view that the price could well come back and retest that so it looks like 38 may well be the high probable play so if i was waiting to get in and i couldn't get in with these rising demand lines here then on a high probability play i would be wanting to get in here and securing my position yes it could fall down to this level but sometimes it's better to ride that down than to miss this move up here so there you go you've got three levels here the 41 42 38 and 35. And if you want to use the box theory to find out exactly how bullish we are if we draw a box here 
between 31 and the 25,000 that we had recently, this big consolidation. So if we move this box up one more level, having consolidated in this range, we've absolutely flown all the way through this box. And what have we done? We've gone above that and now come back and retested it. So this is a very good level where we could easily bounce off on our way to the next level, which is going to be about 46 to 48,000. So very important when you look at these levels and gives us an indication of what the market wants to do. This is very bullish. It's coming back, retesting the top of that box before the next move to the upside. So just to give you my thoughts on the strategy that I'm looking at and the thoughts that I'm contemplating while this is moving up. So we can see on the monthly chart, quite easily that this, having bottomed out at 15,400, we made this move into this big consolidation. And now in a very bullish way, we moved very fast to much higher levels here. And our next target here is at 50,000. But obviously if you look left here, there is a very good level at between 46 and 48,000. We can see that at the RSI MTF line, which is the first target where I said that we were more likely to have a pullback so we're just having a little bit of a pullback from there. But because of the narrative that's been playing out, i.e. the lack of supply, the increase in demand and the ETF narrative in the background, I said in the last video that with a higher probability, we're going to move to the next level rather than have a big pullback here, which we've done historically before. So it all really depends on how you want to interpret this. I interpret this as a very bullish move for Bitcoin. And there are several options to consider here. Firstly, as I've mentioned, the Bitcoin supply seems to be falling. So you can see the Bitcoin supply hits a historic low. And long-term investors like me, although my investments are in the Bitcoin miners, but the long-term investors are basically hoarding, i.e. they're not letting go of their tokens. And that is at record levels. So you've got the supply falling. And because of the ETF narrative that's playing out, people are desperate to move on board. But not only that, the people who missed out here and didn't get on board because everybody at that point was thinking it's going to go down to 12,000, 7,000, etc. Then when it got to this level, they thought, oh yes, we're finally going to get a big fallout. Didn't happen. Then we came to the top of this market here. They thought that this is going to fall. It didn't happen. And now having made this move over here, these people who missed out on this big move are now desperate to get on board here. And this is one of the reasons why as the markets moved up, you can see quite clearly that every time it's moved up and had a little bit of a correction, it's bought up very, very quickly. Look at these. The market is not giving anybody an opportunity to get on board with any level of correction. And this is the first real correction we've had since back down here. And even then, you can see there's a long wick at the bottom of that. It's being bought up very, very quickly. So you can see the psychology of the market really playing out. So what it tells me is that the Bitcoin price at the moment is not being allowed to have a correction because of the reasons I've just given you. And there is another reason actually that when people did get in here, very few did, but those that did over here were riding quite a lot of profits at this point. And you would have expected the way this price movement was going on that there was going to be a correction here. So those who had profits at this point sold at this point with a nice hefty profit, waiting to buy back their positions down here, which didn't obviously come. So these people who took profits here are also trying to get in at this point and they've lost their positions. And this is why it's very important to take a four year view because this is a four year cycle and we have two more years to go. And when you take that four year view, because these cycles have repeated endless times as we've seen here, after every halving, we get these big pumps to the upside and we're waiting here in April and we should get another pump either to the end of 2025 for a right translated cycle or at the end of 2024 for a left translated cycle. But taking this view here, this four year view, this allows you to ride the profits and not get shaken out of your positions. That in this kind of mood that Bitcoin is in, and with that narrative I've just explained to you, the reasons I've given you, Bitcoin can easily leave you behind over here. So anybody thinking of taking profits currently, yes, it may be a good idea, and we may come back down to the 38 thousand dollar mark in this region here. However, if it doesn't give you that, then you're going to get left behind and have to buy back your positions at a higher level. That's always the danger to have a look at. And the converse of that is that if you don't take profits here 
and the market comes back to these levels, 31, 32 even, then you're going to be kicking yourself why you didn't take profits here. And you really have to marry those two emotions and come to some sort of a conclusion where you're comfortable with. Because that's the dilemma everyone has to grapple with. And that has no easy answer. And I've given you my answer. I was going to take profits. I was going to take profits at this level here at 40,000 as the price came up to the RSI MTF line. So this is a good point for it to actually correct. But for the reasons I mentioned, I'm not really confident anymore. And that the next level, the 78.6, around 50,000, and these levels here at 46 to 48 now look more probable than would otherwise be the case. So on balance, I want to just hold until further developments and keep a fluid and flexible position with a neutral mindset. And as I mentioned in last week's video on Friday, we don't really know if Bitcoin is developing into a left translated cycle this time, in which case it makes sense for Bitcoin to keep going and hit all time highs around the halving point. So if this keeps going now into the halving, this red line, if this keeps going up and we actually come to the all time high level of 69, any time around the halving time, then this is telling me that we're going to have a left translated cycle and that we're not going to get to the end of 2025. And this white line that we've drawn here, if I zoom out, you can see that it's a very long trend line from back in 2010. So that's taking into account the tops and that's taking into account all the tops that we've had so far. And that would suggest that at the end of 2024, over here, if we hit this white line, that would be around about the hundred, hundred and five thousand dollar before we have a two year bear market. So it would be topping out before the end of 2025, which is what we are expecting in a normal four year cycle. So if this keeps going into this halving, then that would be a case for me to take profits as we move towards this white line. So this would be a sign for me and see exactly where the Bitcoin miners are that when the Bitcoin price hits anywhere around this white line in 2024, then I would be inclined to take profits in my Bitcoin miners portfolio. So this is the reason why I think on balance, it's better to ride this because this is a possibility now that is becoming increasingly likely. It really is 50-50 whether this is going to be a left translated cycle or a right translated cycle. Okay, just going back to the 60 day cycle, especially for the private Bitcoin miners section that we have running on this channel, we're obviously having a pullback into the 60 day cycle and shortly we will be starting a new cycle, whether it's at this point or whether it's gonna get lower down here at 38. And those of you who are private members here will know that we use these 60 day cycles to start our new swing trades with the Bitcoin miners. So I'm watching this very carefully that as soon as we have a sign that this has bottomed out and a new cycle has begun, then we will be looking at the swing trades for the Bitcoin miners. And those of you who are following our swing trades in the private Bitcoin miners section, so far at the close of play on Friday, we're up 89% on the current trade that we've got live at the moment with miner A and 12% on miner B. So, so far since the 18th of October, we've come up to seven and a half, 33%, minus 5%, 89 and 12. And because the market is now having a correction, I would be looking to get out of those trades sometime later on today when the market's open. So for the private members, please look out for the messages I'm going to be leaving in the members section. And people often ask me, how do the Bitcoin miners compare with the altcoins? So as we know, the altcoins have been rising over the last few weeks. So how do they compare with the Bitcoin miners? Okay, so I showed you this chart, which is the Bitcoin dominance chart. When we were coming up to here, I mentioned to you that we should break out, come back and retest this, and that I would expect Bitcoin to go much higher. So having done that, you can see that this particular candle here, this gravestone doji candle, this is giving you a very strong signal, a very high probability that the Bitcoin dominance is going to be falling, which means that the altcoins are going to be rising. So I'm expecting with a higher probability that most of the altcoins are now going to have a very big move to the upside. So the dominance will be coming back down. Having said that, if you do a 61.8 from this level here for the previous low, then the Fibonacci is telling us that the level of the Bitcoin dominance should come down to around about the 51, 52% mark. So we could actually get a turnaround from this level with Bitcoin going much higher. Because if you look all along here, what we're really getting is very small pullbacks into this. So having had a pullback here, we've had one pullback here, 
and now there is a potential for another pullback. So it may well be on this level here, on this trend line. So it may not be a big move to the downside, which is telling us that Bitcoin is very bullish still, even despite having a sign that the price is going to come down in terms of the Bitcoin dominance. So if we have a look at some of the altcoins, the darlings of the altcoin space, if we compare them with the Bitcoin miners, you'll get some sort of an idea. Of course, one of the best performing altcoins has been Solana. And at the end of 2022, when most of the Bitcoin miners bottomed out along with Bitcoin, if we make a true comparison from this point here, when Solana was around $17 here, the current price at around about $69 is up by about 296%. And if we compare that with one or two of the miners, the two biggest being Marathon. So Marathon, when it bottomed out at the end of 2022, that has risen to Friday's close by 419%. So it's outperformed the darling of the crypto altcoin space when compared to Solana. And if you look at Riot platforms, very similarly, that's gone up by 362%. So once again, the Bitcoin miners have outperformed the altcoin space. And many of the altcoins haven't really taken off at all. Solana is really one of the exceptions. Because if you look at XRP, another darling of the crypto altcoin space, when it bottomed out here at the beginning of the year, since then, that's only moved up by 108%. And Cardano, one of the other ones that a lot of people seem to have an interest in, that bottomed out here at the end of 2022. And since then, that's risen by about 133%. So once again, the Bitcoin miners on the whole will outperform the altcoins. And this is why I'm more in the Bitcoin miners. I have no altcoins. I have no interest in buying any altcoins. It's a space that I'm totally ignoring. So with this kind of swing trade performance that I've been showing, this is our current trades. And our first swing trades back in March were giving us these increases of 37, 22, 52, 42, 39 and 29. And we got stopped out on one of them. So you can see that it is actually proving to be a very good space for people who are in the Bitcoin miners club here. So the Bitcoin miners is a very good space to have swing trades as well as growing the long-term portfolio, which we do by using two methods, the ratios method, as well as the swing trades. So we have two more years to go. And if it's something that you want to join us on that two-year journey, if it's going to be a proper four-year cycle, or it could turn out to be a left translated cycle with Bitcoins. So that means it's going to be a one-year journey to the top of the market. So if you want to join us on this one-year or two-year journey with the Bitcoin miners, on our ratios method, as well as the swing trades and the long-term portfolio, then you can join us by clicking this join button here. And for the price of a coffee per week, you'll have access to all of the videos that we've done so far. We do a special video every Wednesday, as well as many bonus videos in between. And I usually do an update every single day. Okay, so we'll leave it at that. Hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and to subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.